Yesterday, we have finished reading the introduction of the last chapter of this book. Today, we're going to dive in to the suttas itself. Chapter 10, the planes of realization, the field of merit for the world. Eight persons worthy of gifts. Monks, these eight persons are worthy of gifts, worthy of hospitality, worthy of offerings, worthy of referential salutations. The unsurpassed field of merit for the world. What ache? The stream enterer, the one practicing for the relaxation of the fruit of stream entry. The one's returner, the one practicing for the realization of the fruit of one's returning. The non-returner, the one practicing for the realization of the fruit of non-returning. And the last one, of course, the Arahant and the one practicing for Arahantship. Monks, these eight persons are worthy of gifts, worthy of hospitality, worthy of offerings, worthy of referential salutations, the unsurpassed field of merit for the world. From Anguttara Nikaya, 8.59. We have seen this in the introduction many times, and we can see a table summarized nicely by Bhikkhu Bodhi. Sister Chai Kwon, would you like to continue? Section 2. Differentiation by faculties. Monks, there are these five faculties. What five? The faculty of faith, the faculty of energy, the faculty of mindfulness, the faculty of concentration, the faculty of wisdom. These are the five faculties. One who has completed and fulfilled these five faculties is an arahant. If they are weaker than that, one is practicing for the realization of the fruits of arahanship. If still weaker, one is a non-returner. If still weaker, one is practicing for the realization of the fruits of non-returning. If still weaker, one is a one's returner. If still weaker, one is practicing for the realization of the fruits of one's returning. If still weaker, one is a stream enterer. If still weaker, one is practicing for the realization of the fruits of stream entry. But monks, I say that one in whom these five faculties are completely and totally absent is an outsider, one standing amid the worldlings. Samyutta Nikaya 48, 18. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thanks, Sister Chaikwan. Hmm. Uh, this talks about the five faculties faith, energy, mindfulness, concentration, wisdom. So, of course, the strongest of these five faculties would be the Arhant. And then, gradually, if is weaker, then gradually we will lower down the level. If it's weaker, then we are practicing. The one is practicing for the fruit of arahanship all the way until yeah, the weakest out of the egg, the one that we just read, is one is practicing for the fruit of stream and tree. Then what about us? <laughs> we are the weakest of the weak. One in whom these five faculties are completely and totally absent. We are outsider, 
one standing amid the woodlands. Actually, that's not true. Ours is not completely absent. We, yeah, the fact that we're here every morning and read the Dharma shows that at least we have some faith in the Triple Gems. So we are not the weakest of the weak. Yeah. At least we have some degree of faith. Hey, Sister Aikim, would you like to continue? In the Dharma well expounded, monks, the Dharma well expounded by me task is clear, open, evident, and free of patchwork. In the Dharma well expounded by me thus, which is clear, open, evident, and free of patchwork, those monks who are arahan with pains destroyed, who have lived the spiritual life, done what had to be done, laid down the burden, reached their own goal, utterly destroyed the fetters of existence, and are completely liberated through final knowledge, have no round for manifestation. Monks, the Dharma well expounded by me thus is clear until free of patchwork. In the Dharma well expounded by me thus, those monks who have abandoned the five lower fetters are all due to be reborn spontaneously in the pure abodes and they are attained and there attain final Nibbana without ever returning from that world. Monks, Dharma well expounded by me thus is clear until free of patchwork. In the Dharma well expounded by me thus, those monks who have abandoned three fetters and attenuate lust, hate and delusions are all once returners, returning once to this world to make an end of suffering. Monks, the Dharma well expounded by me thus is clear until free of patchwork. In the Dharma well expounded by me thus, those monks who have abandoned three fetters are all stream enterers, no longer bound to the lower world, fixed in destiny, with enlightenment as their destination. Monks, the Dharma well expounded by me thus is clear until free of patchwork. In the Dharma well expounded by me thus, those monks who are Dharma followers or faith followers all have enlightenment as their destination. Monks, the Dharma well expounded by me thus is clear, open, evident, and free of patchwork. In the Dharma well expounded by me thus, those who have sufficient faith in me, sufficient love for me, all have heaven as their destination. For Majima Nikaya 22. Alagad du Pamad Sutta. Thank you. Thanks, Sister Akim. Okay, this Sutta has a lot of footnotes. Let's take a look one by one, starting from number five. As the Arahans have achieved liberation from the realm of existence, it is impossible to point to any place within the realm where they might appear. Hence, they have no future round for manifestation. Highlighting the one mentioned here. So this one indicates this whole lines. Indicates the attainment of Arahanshi. Who knows number six? The five lower fetters. Panchoram Bhagyani Samyo Janani are identity view, doubt, grasping of rules and observances, sensual lust, and ill will. Those who are spontaneously reborn, or Papatika, take rebirth without dependence on the mother and father. So there are realms where you can spontaneously, spontaneously reborn without the need of biological parents. And this 
Five lower factors identity field doubt, grasping of rules and observances, observances, sensual lust, and ill will. We can refer back to the table of summary that we have read in the introduction. Okay, so these lines will talk about non-returners. The next one, those monks who have abandoned three fetters, attenuated loss, hate, and delusions are all one's returners. Then footnotes number seven. The three fetters are the first three of the five fetters just above, fixed in destiny, niyata, means that the stream enterer is bound to reach liberation in at most seven more lives past, either in the human world or in celestial realms. Enlightenment, somebody, is the Arahant's full and final knowledge of the Four Noble Truths. Uh, this is for the stream enterers. Then for notes number eight. On the distinction between these two types, see below text chapter 10, section 1.5. Just a reference to other texts. So this will talk about the two types, Dharma followers, faith followers. And the last one, for those number nine, PS, the commentary says that this refers to persons devoted to the practice of insight who have not reached any supramundane realization but possess strong conviction in the truth of the Dharma. The words Sada Matang Pama Matang might have been translated mere faith, mere love, but such qualities could not guarantee a rebirth in heaven. It thus seems necessary to take the suffix Mata as implying a sufficient amount of these qualities, not simply their mere existence. So this line talks about those who have sufficient faith in me, sufficient love for me, then they will have heaven as their destination. Their destination. Yeah. Me here refers to the Buddha. Okay, Sister Shwami, would you like to continue? For the completeness of the teaching, when a monk has abandoned craving, cut it off at the root, made it like a palm stump, done away with it so that it is no longer subject to future arising. That monk is an arahant with chains destroyed. One who has lived the spiritual life, done what had to be done, laid down the burden, reached his own goal, utterly destroyed the fetters of existence, and is completely liberated through final knowledge. Apart from Master Gotama, is there any monk, Master Gotama's disciple, who by realizing it for himself with direct knowledge in this present life, enters upon and dwells in the liberation of mind, liberation by wisdom, that is changeless with the destruction of the chains. There are, Vacha, not only 100 or two or three or four or 500, by far more monks, my disciples, who by realizing it for themselves with direct knowledge, in this present life, enter upon and dwell in the liberation of mind, liberation by wisdom, 
that is taintless with the destruction of the taints. Okay, thanks, Sister Shomi. Put notes number 10. The Buddha here is speaking with the wanderer Wacha Gota. See, text chapter 9, section 5.6. P.S. The commentary says the Wacha Gota thought the Buddha may have been the only one within his community to have attained the final goal. Thus, that's why he asked the question, huh? is it only you who are completely liberated? Then the Buddha answered, of course not. All my disciples, not just 100, not just 200, but three, four, five hundred, 500, but far more than that. The Buddha's disciples has realized for themselves with direct knowledge. Attain our hardship. Liberated, liberation by wisdom, destruction of things. Okay, I read one, a few more paragraphs. Apart from Master Gotama and the monks, is there any nant Master Gotama's disciple who, by realizing it for herself, with direct knowledge in this present life, enters upon and dwells in the liberation of mind. Liberation by wisdom that is tainless with the destruction of the taints. There are not only 100 or 500, but far more nuns, my disciples, who by realizing it for themselves, with direct knowledge in this present life, enter upon and dwell in the liberation of mind, liberation by wisdom that is tainless with the destruction of the taints. Okay, so the two paragraph, uh, actually number eight. Previously, he asked about the monks. Now, he switched to nuns. And the Buddha's answer is the same. Not only 100 or 500, but far more nuns have attained our hardship. Hey, Sister Chai Kwan, would you like to read a few more? Apart from Master Gotama and the monks and nuns, is there any male lay follower, Master Gotama's disciple? clothed in white, leading a life of celibacy, celibacy, who with the destruction of the five lower factors will be reborn spontaneously in the pure abode and there attain final divana without ever returning from that world. There are not only 100 or 500, but far more male lay followers, my disciples, clothed in white, leading lives of celibacy, who with the destruction of the five lower factors will be reborn spontaneously in the pure abode and there attain final divana without ever returning from that world. Thanks, Sister Chai Kwan. Thank you. Okay, check, did I miss one footnotes? Footnotes number 10. Okay, I have read footnotes number 10. Let's take a look at footnotes number 11. This question and the one in number 11 concern the non-returner. Note that non-returners observe celibacy. Mm -hmm. So the keyword here you can see, without ever returning from that world. And that's why it's called non-returners, not returning anymore. Okay, I will stop at this point. Let's do a quick recap of what we have read so far. The first sutta that we read today is about the eight persons worthy of gift. From the stream enterer all the way to Arahant. And we can again refer back to the table in the introduction for the summaries. And next we talk about the five faculties 
from the strongest, which would be the Arahant. And among the eight persons, the weakest would be the one practicing for the realization of the fruit of stream and tree. But where do we stand? Right now, we are almost among the word links. Probably we can call us the virtuous word links or the faithful word links. And then we take a look at the Dharma world is founded. And we start from the Arahant. And then we go, gradually go to the lower stage of realization, lower planes of realization. So from Arahant, non-returner highlighted in red. Once returners, stream enterers, and then below stream enterers, we have Dharma followers and faith followers. And then at the end, we have sufficient faith and sufficient love for the Buddha. We'll have heaven as their destination. And then we read partially about the completeness of teaching and then the wonder what Chagota starts with a question. Is it only the Buddha who is liberated or are there other people as well? Are the monks, are the nuns, are the male lay followers? And we will continue next time with this sutta. Any questions or comments? Mm. I think um, celibacy must be a very big taint um, compared to other things. I, I get the impression because it's mentioned in quite a few uh, books, like for instance, Ajahn Chah, I took, we mentioned before in this session that um, he spent almost a chapter on sexual inclinations, you know, sexual defilements. And I was working on another, helping a team uh, of people with some edits for one of the Ajahns uh, who is who's going to publish his own autobiography. And his early days, his early struggles of wanting to go into uh, monkhood. The first biggest, I think the big, one of the biggest battles, the way I see the number of pages devoted to it was on celibacy. So must be a very difficult thing for, yeah. Although I wonder whether celibacy is more difficult for men than women, but that's just one of my mental formations. That's a very good question. I'm wondering that too. Yeah. Because not enough, there are not enough uh, spoken about male, females, you know, in the on the path. Yeah. Yes, very good question. Maybe if we encounter nuns, we can ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like who venerable to ten children or some other nuns. We can raise the question. But yeah, I totally agree with you. I, I also think that celibacy probably is one of the most difficult one to mm. observe. Mm. And we can even see oh, last only eradicated only at the very high stage. Not even stream enterers would have eradicated lust. Mm. So it would be at least either arahants or non-returners. So, yeah, so I think also, so and maybe that's why it is the meditation on unattractiveness of the body is such a major part of the practice for the, especially for the Theravadas, right? I am not sure about the Mahanis. Yeah, it is definitely a big part of it. Yes, I agree. Yes. Very good observations. Thanks for the comments, Sister Shomi. Yeah, and we can find out about the questions. Yeah, whether lust affect female as much as male. Yeah, I think that's a question worth exploring. Yeah. Another, is, yeah. another question is, um, it's always been said that it's very difficult for females in its female form uh, to become Arahans to become Buddhists, to walk the Buddha path or to go into monastics, right? 
Um, so how do I relate that to what we just read? Uh, which part specifically that we just read? The part about, um, you know, that I think the part where we talk about where, where it was mentioned that the females are there are just as many who have attained arahans uh, who, who have um, relinquished the faculty, who have the faculties. Uh huh. Isn't that good? Well, okay, let, let's go back to the text quickly. Okay. If we, if we read carefully, it does not exactly mention that there are same number of nuns who attain liberation, arahanship. Yeah, let, let's go away. There are not only 100 or 500, but far more nuns. The Buddha doesn't specifically mention a number. Yeah, so we, we can't really interpret or conclude that there are the same numbers of nuns who are liberated. Well, the fact is that there are. La, okay? Yeah, they, they are, they are for sure. Of course, they are. And Ananda did ask Buddha, no? he said whether the female can gain enlightenment. He said, See, then the Buddha replied him, female is also the same as a male, can get enlightenment. That's why, that's why he agreed to the the uh, 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 the female becoming nuns ordination of the female it starts the ordination of female eh? and the mm. eight uh, I don't know the eight gan gan dharma or this they have the set lah. okay okay thanks for the comments sister Craig yes so what what I'd like to point out is that there are no specific numbers mentioned here. So we can't conclude easily that they are equal numbers. Yeah, but they are, of course, they are nuns who are liberated. Okay, that's a good question, Sister Shwami. Anything else we'd like to add? If not, would Brother Hotji like to do the dedication? Shishi, Brother Hoji, here we meet again. May we be guided by the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Have a worthy Thursday ahead. Thanks, everyone. See you guys next time.